This section should give a short introduction to general technical description and description of main components. In general, an onboard AIS consists of antennae, one VHF transmitter, two multi-channel VHF receivers, one channel 70 VHF receiver for channel management, a central processing unit, an electronic position fixing system, interface to heading and speed devices, BIIT, built-in integrity test, MKD, minimum keyboard and display unit. In addition, the following optional interfaces may be provided. Interface to radar and ARPA, automatic radar plotting aid. Interface to electronic chart system, ECS, or ECDIS, electronic navigation chart display information system. Interface to INS, integrated navigation system. ROT, rate of turn indicator. VDR, voyage data recorder. Long-range communication system, AIS graphical display, with the integral minimum display and keyboard unit, the AIS would be able to operate as a standalone unit. A standalone graphical display, or the integration of the AIS data display with other devices, such as INS, ECS, ECDIS, radar, or ARPA, would significantly increase the effectiveness of AIS. AIS operates primarily on two dedicated VHF channels, AIS-1 at 161.975 MHz, and AIS-2 at 162.025 MHz. Where these channels are not available regionally, the AIS is capable of automatically switching to alternate designated channels. The required ship reporting capacity, according to IMO performance standards, amounts to a minimum of 2,000 time slots per minute. The International Telecommunication Union's ITU technical standard for AIS provides 4,500 time slots per minute. The AIS broadcast mode is based on a principle called Self-Organized Time Division Multiple Access, abbreviated SOTDMA. This technology allows the system to be overloaded by 400 to 500 percent and still provide nearly 100 percent throughput for ships closer than 8 to 10 nautical miles to each other in ship-to-ship -ship mode. SOTDMA uses the extremely accurate standard time references supplied via GPS signals to synchronize data transmissions from multiple users thus preventing interference and loss of information. GPS provides both the universal time reference and the positioning data for each vessel. In the event of system overload, only targets far away will be subject to dropout in order to give preference to targets close by that are the primary concern of ship-to-ship -ship operation of AIS. In practice, the capacity of the system is unlimited, allowing for a great number of ships to be accommodated at the same time. The dynamic information update rate depends mainly on the ship's speed, that is, slow speed equals low updating rate, and high speed equals high updating rate. The following table gives updating intervals for AIS dynamic information.
Static information, such as call sign and name, type of ship, etc., will automatically be updated every six minutes or on request. Voyage-related information, such as ship's draft, destination, etc., are updated every six minutes when data has been amended and on request. From a technical point of view, AIS is an advanced piece of equipment. From the operator's point of view, AIS is just another black box, simple and straightforward to operate. However, the operational aspect may turn out to be a bigger challenge than anticipated. The reasons for this statement will be discussed in more detail in the next chapter. The AIS is normally connected to the ship's main power source, as well as to the ship's emergency power source. If connected to the emergency power supply, a new calculation of consumption has to be made. The location of the AIS VHF antenna should be weighed carefully. Digital communication is more sensitive than analog and voice communication to interference created by reflections and obstructions, like masts and booms. The GPS antenna must be installed where it has a clear view of the sky. The objective is to see the horizon freely through 360 degrees with a vertical observation of 5 to 90 degrees above the horizon. Small diameter obstructions, such as masts and booms, do not seriously degrade signal reception, but such objects must not eclipse more than a few degrees of any given bearing. The functionality of the minimum keyboard and display shall be available to the mariner. This can be by means of the AIS internal MKD, integrated or remote, or through the equivalent functionality on a separate display system. In case of a separate display, the internal MKD does not need to be installed. A pilot input and output port is part of an AIS station. A plug connected to this port should be installed on the bridge near the pilot's coning position so that a pilot can connect a personal pilot unit. If there is navigational equipment capable of processing and displaying AIS information, such as ECTIS, ARPA, or a dedicated system available on board the ship, the AIS mobile system may be connected to that system via the AIS presentation interface. The AIS requires an alarm output to be connected to an audible alarm device or to the ship's alarm system, if available. Installing AIS does not establish a need to install additional sensors over and above carriage requirements.